Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher called by high school. There is a student here with a gun. He was shot out of a window. I believe one of them. I can call him by high school. I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just a lot of Okay, is this going to get injured now? Okay. And the toilet's in a panic. And I'm in the library. I've got a student down on the table, kid. Head down to the table. Our kids are screaming. And the teachers are, you know, trying to get trouble. largest school shootings in U.S. history. Until April 20th, 1999, the American public had never had to confront an issue of this magnitude that had started in their own backyard. No one had expected two teenagers from a quiet area of the developing state of Colorado to commit such an atrocity. Eric and Dylan both had common problems associated with teenagers, superiority complexes and not fitting in. Nevertheless, their irrational thoughts turned into actions from buying guns to driving their school with guns in their trench coats and planting bombs in the cafeteria and waiting for them to explode. Had they gone off, part of the school would have collapsed, resulting in more lives lost. With each student or teacher's life that is lost, a series of family and friends' lives are also lost. Furthermore, on April 20th, 1999, the supposed safety of school itself came into question. Tighter restrictions on firearm sales and more open discussions about mental illness in teens can prevent further attacks. We spoke with several members of the media who have experienced covering these tragedies, including a former KCNC reporter who was on the scene that fateful day. Hello, I'm Wendy Birch. I'm a reporter here at KTLA in Los Angeles, but a number of years ago, I was actually working at KCNC, the CBS affiliate in Denver, Colorado, at the time of the Columbine shooting. I wasn't at the station at the time the shooting took place. I was actually at home. I had finished up my morning shift. But when news of what had happened spread, I immediately went in. I remember that next morning standing in front of the hospital where many of the critical patients had been taken, delivering live shot and report after report on the tragedy. What was so difficult during that time was trying to make sense of it all. I think people during a time of tragedy are trying to find answers, and we simply, as reporters, did not have them. Uh, what was my initial reaction when I heard about Columbine? To say that you're in utter disbelief is, is putting it lightly because you have to remember at that point there was no social media. There were no tweets, Snapchats, Facebook posts you could go to trying to find out if any of this could possibly be true. And at that point it really was so inconceivable. This mass shooting, 12 students dead, a teacher dead two students responsible and that had killed themselves. None of this seemed absolutely possible. All we saw with chopper pictures overhead from Columbine in those initial hours was just chaos, was just the running back and forth and teachers trying to protect students and, and security officers and police officers trying to get them out of buildings as quickly as possible. So we were just waiting moment by moment to find out if this actually possibly could be fathomable. And once it all soaked in and once we realized that this was true, you sort of knew at that moment that nothing was going to be the same. Gun control is one of modern day America's most controversial and debated political topics. The topic was thrown into the spotlight of controversy only about 20 years ago when a multitude of mass shootings began trending. On April 20th, 1999, Bill and Klebold and Eric Harris arrived at Columbine High School and fired upon their classmates. Bill Clinton demanded the prevention of future shootings, and as a result, the Senate managed to narrowly pass an amendment to require background checks for those who purchase firearms. 80% of guns used at crimes are purchased without a background check, including those acquired and used at Columbine. But has the American public learned? According to the FBI records, there have been 50 attempted mass murders on school grounds since Columbine. Specifically, there have been 74 planned shootings based off of Columbine with 14 intended on the actual anniversary. 
One of the most notable shootings inspired by Dylan and Eric took place 13 years after Columbine in Newtown, Connecticut, where 28 people lost their lives in another senseless rampage. In 2012, after the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School, President Obama initiated a plan to change current gun control laws, including the prohibition of the sales of certain semi-automatic rifles and high-capacity magazines. Some states contemplated tightening their own gun control laws, but ultimately, this debate got locked in Congress and eventually failed. are senselessly taken, we are all left to pick up the pieces. Ground had a rose and passed its knees.